Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Sales Hustle Club. This is volume three of this seven-part series. I hope you guys had a fantastic weekend. I know I had a kick-butt weekend as well. Um, just a reminder for everybody, if you want to get something out of the time that you're going to spend with me, might I make a, a suggestion? Your phone is full of distractions, so if you could mute your notifications, if you could get a pen, if you could get some paper, write some notes. I'm going to talk about a lot of things. I'm just hoping three of these things settle with you. We have a tendency to have things that we think about or we hear, hey, that's a great idea. I should do something about it. So write it down. I want you walking away with some energy. I want you walking away with um, a new sense of mindset of what is possible. The whole purpose of the Sales Hustle Call is to get you pumped up so you can make some money, so you can create value in the universe. And it's my mission to really connect with you guys. I'm going to try to open the floor for more conversations than I've done in the past. Um, I want to hear from you. So this, um, this whole purpose of the Sales Hustle Club, it's going to be about 30 minutes. I have a little special surprise at the end that, um, that is a little unique, and a little different. You will not expect what I'm about to show you today, uh, but uh, I hope to have you guys on board with this and what we're about to do. If you haven't already, please uh, mute your microphone um, and... Um, if you haven't already, we are going to open the floor for some conversations. And I did want to make sure I talk about um, something real fast, and that is uh, in a second. But this whole talk is about our emotional roller coaster of selling. It has um, been my experience that there is a lot going on when we're out selling from lack of motivation to getting rejection having to pick ourselves up when someone sends you an email and says they're not going to buy from you and you expected that big deal to close. It is an emotional roller coaster and it affects everything in your world. You may wake up in the middle of the night worried about closing a deal, worried about getting your quota. All of these things exist. And when I was selling and I was going door to door and someone gave me that rejection, ugh, it didn't feel good. And um, it would make you stop going to that next place. And I'm just hoping to give you some tips and tricks that would help you going forward so you don't have that same sensation and keeping you from reaching your ultimate possibility of what you could do in your life. Um, as a reminder on my email, I am offering a $100 gift card for the best sales rejection story. And uh, I am super excited to hopefully have someone on this call that's going to think right now about a time in their life where they had a situation happen. It could be you were cold calling, going door to door, and someone chased you out with a dog. Or it could be a story about um, someone... Um, Make you not feel good about what you do every single day. And so it changed your mental attitude and it really puts you on a funk. And how'd you get out of that funk? So I want that to be something that we share here. It's going to be towards the end, but uh, I wanted to put this on the table and have you guys thinking about, but I will ask you if you are going to share a sales story to be on video for me, if you could, um, you know, share the story with your face and your audio would be super awesome. Um, right now, before I get into the content, I want you to think for a moment, just for the second, the most important thing that you're going to do this week in your sales arena, write it in the notes, write it in the chat. What are you going to do this week? What is your intention? When we set intentions on our week, we're going to have a far better week than if you don't. So put that in the chat for me, if you would. Yes, take a moment. Think about this. What is on your plate that you're, by gosh, on Friday, 5 p.m., you're going to think back to me talking about this, this, this thing, this intention. You're going to go, I'm thankful I made that commitment because I achieved that goal. I did that task. I made my intention so. So put that in the chat for me if you would. Yes, this is a participation kind of call. All right, let's get started. 
Listen, your food is your money. So many of us are not exactly eating what we should be eating for a sales week. The food we put in our bodies becomes our energy. And when our energy is getting crappy fuel, our body's getting crappy fuel, you're not going to have the energy to make it through the entire day. And so I ask you this. Next time you find yourself where you're having low energy, okay? Because low energy will absolutely affect your ability to use your willpower muscle. What is your willpower muscle? The willpower muscle is the thing that keeps you moving forward, keeps you taking that next step towards that objective. But if you have low energy, using that willpower muscle gets really, really difficult. I want to tell you a little story about a, a little experiment I did with my sales team a long, long time ago. Um, and this was back when I had my wireless stores. This is back in 2019, 18. I partnered with this company called, um, oh gosh, what were they called? Eh, I'll think of it in a second. It was a fitness program uh, called Kenzai. And actually, they're super popular in Japan, but it's a food program and it's an app for exercise. And the whole idea is you do a 30 day program where it's actually, I'm sorry, it's a 90 day program of fitness, eating the right foods not drinking, um, basically having some sort of diet, but you're working out every day and you're tracking it. And I had my entire, uh, I had a team of 30 people doing this program. I paid for the program. No, I'm sorry. The employee paid for the program. And if they completed the program, got, they got their money back. Um, and I wanted to see if this um, if this work would relate to more sales. And what I discovered was those that were heavily into the program, um, they did a great job with maintaining their disciplines for the diet and the food. But when it came to selling, it impacted their sales for a period of time because they were exercising a will willpower muscle. And through the studies that I did, it was with the it was a study through University of Alabama. And what the outcome of the study study was, and through other research and other papers, that people, when exercising their willpower muscle and making decisions like uh, choosing to eat better, right? That's a challenge. Using to start working out is a challenge for a lot of people. But if your mindset was you have a limited amount of willpower, you struggled to do all of those things. So if you were doing the workout, eating healthy, cooking healthy in the morning, and then you got to work, you just had worn out your willpower muscle. And the, the, the lesson for the whole program was, if you had a mindset that your willpower is unlimited, you were able to do all of the things to, that you needed to do to be successful. But if you thought it was limited, you only had so much energy to eat healthy and exercise and then sales. So, and the reason I, I say all this is, the food that you eat does equate to your energy level and being aware of what you're eating and how you're feeling is important. So when you find yourself on low energy, ask yourself this question, what did I eat that could have affected that? Is there a pattern here? Foods that you could be eating because food is your energy, complex carbohydrate, lean proteins, fatty acids, um, but you want to have things that help you with the good function of your nervous system in your brain. Walk outside daily. Now, I'll tell you something. Before I continue on this, I raced to get this thing completed this morning. I got distracted with another project. But uh, so if I misspelled something, hey, give me a, give me a pass here. But um, walking every day, the forward momentum that you have when you walk outside and having fresh air, oh my gosh, it's a game changer for me. I walk outside every single day and rarely miss it, sometimes if it's raining or super cold. But use the time that you also have when you're walking outside to make sales calls. There's nothing better than making your calls outside. Walking, that forward momentum is satisfying. You're getting fresh air. You're moving your body. 
and it's going to wake you up. If you feel tired in the afternoon, go on a walk. Walking will wake you up. Now, this is something that uh, I have done for a while off and on. I'm actually back into a new habit, um, and that is journaling daily. There's tons of scientific data to back me up on this. Because when you start your day on the right track, you roll out of bed, don't jump on your phone, jump on a piece of paper if you have a journal. Um, I just bought this one last month. It's called the Oak Journal. There's really nothing to see. A little logo maybe right here. This buddy of mine uh, does it. If you go to oakjournal.com, you can buy it. I think there's a 30% off. I don't get anything. I'm not selling the journal, but I'm just telling you it's a great journal for me. But in the very beginning of the journal, it has pick three goals that you want to achieve over the next 90 days. Progression through goal setting and having a 90-day amount of time that you're going to uh, try to achieve these things. These goals are not easy. I have three on my list right now. One of them is starting a podcast and I'm making some serious progress. Number two is working with you on these calls. Uh, and then I have another one. And um, having the goals written, written down and how you're going to achieve them. And every time I go to journal, I think about those. But before I get started, I'm going to Cover what I'm grateful for. How do you feel grateful for whatever it is? It's your family. It's the fact you have a great job. It could be you have a car that works. You know, whatever it is, every day, write down those three things. And something that I learned uh, just last week, I'm really into these YouTube shows and, 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 and channels about self-development and whatnot. And one guy talks about when you're doing your gratitude and you write down your three gratitude items, Close your eyes and then think of the other things you're grateful for, but feel the feeling of gratitude and have that just sensation. So if you were to think about things that you're grateful for and just focus on that feeling, it's, it's amazing how it will really get your, your day started. Your vision for the day, write down that vision. I hope to have inspired you today. That's my vision. I want to inspire you to make a change in a habit. I want to inspire you to believe that you can do much more than you're doing every day because we all can do better. I don't need you to be the best. I just need you to be this much better than you were yesterday. That's my vision for today for you. Top three things you're going to complete today. So what is on your needs to do list? Write that on a piece of paper. Another thing it does is time block your time. That's huge. Dave Ramsey. I grew up listening to that dude when I was uh, selling phones door to door in 1994. And all he kept talking about was spend your money on paper before the month begins. And by God, I'd have been driving a BMW in the 90s uh, if, I had, uh, if I wasn't listening to him because I would have spent all my money. He helped me save money. He helped me get out of debt. He did all those things. But he says, spend your money on paper before the month begins. Spend your time before the day begins. Time blocking, that's what it does. Um, and then spend some moments just writing down some thoughts. You know, I feel like, I would like to, I don't like, whatever it is, just journal those things and get them out of the way, and get that out of your headspace. And this is the journal that I use, um, but that's kind of what it looks like. You know, notice on the top corner over here, this is a day at a glance. Look at your calendar. Do you... Have things in your calendar that are not benefiting you? Do you need to eliminate? Do you want to go ahead and make a decision that you're going to block off some time and do certain things? Like that simple thing, the journaling, that is going to do a, um, it's like putting a regulator on your day so you don't have the super lows that can happen in the day-to-day -day that, that happens. Hard things equal, equal happiness. So I did this thing some time ago called um, 75 hard, which is 75 days of exercise, two days, two times a day, one time outside, a um, drink a gallon of water, don't drink, um, read 10 pages. Um, what else? Oh, drink a gallon of water. Like all these things, right? And when I originally saw the program, I was like, 
hell no, this is too hard. I don't want to do this. But he had a book. I bought the book in the first chapter, and I was dealing with some stuff. I wasn't having a great year. This was beginning of 2021. And the book starts off the key to happiness. And the story was, how do you become happy? And it says you become happy by overcoming hard things. When we start a project, we start a goal, let's say a 90-day goal, as you have this forward momentum and you're, you're, you're overcoming something, you're getting something over the finish line, you're making forward progress, that's the key to happiness. I mean, we all are striving for that happiness feeling, and it's overcoming hard things. That's the key to happiness. It was a great lesson for me. And it doesn't mean you got to go out and do some crazy exercise program. All it is, is what could you be doing that would give you that forward momentum? Could it be doing a using call proof every day and doing a streak? Yeah, we have streaks in the app to keep up with. You're using the app to grow and sell more. You could say, I'm going to stop social media during the hours of eight and five, and I'm just going to make calls and follow up with people I haven't spoken to in a while. That sensation of doing something hard, you know, it's easy to be on social media. It's hard to do the work and make the calls, right? Breath work. All right. So one of these slides is missing, and I don't know where its slide is at, but it is certainly missing. And I will talk about this in a minute, but I have a little treat for you at the end. And um, we'll talk about that at the end. Let's, let's talk about first, let's go right into our sales rejection story contest. Um, so I want to see and hear from you who here has a sales rejection story that they would like to share. This is a hundred dollar contest. You, you guys have I'll go, Robert. Okay, hold on a second. Uh, is this? Um, do you mind sharing your camera? Yeah, Robert. This is Chuck. Hey, Chuck. Oh, good. You're 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 sharing. Good. I, I see that. Perfect. Yeah. Chuck. No, that's okay. Uh, who are you with, Chuck? Um, I'm with Ziggler's Distributors. Awesome. All right. Let's let's hear this. So I'm the new guy on the block, and I haven't had that many rejections yet um, with Ziggler's, but. <clears throat> I've been in sales for quite a long time and um, I was rejected time in and time out when I was with Mars Chocolate. Um, we were supposed to put in a lot of characters in the grocery stores, you know, for displays and stuff. And I kept on going to the same manager time in and time out. He rejected me at least 10 different times. Uh, and then he finally just gave in to me and he told me, he said he liked my persistence. Mm, mm, excellent. Well, let me ask you this question. How did it make you feel when you were getting rejected? Uh, it made me feel pretty crappy because, it, it, you know, I was questioning myself whether it was the delivery, if I was, you know, catching them at a bad time or whatever. Um, but I kept on changing my delivery each time. And then he finally just gave in, I, you know, because he said, it's your persistence that won me over. Dude, and that is we awesome. Were, you know, we were, we were, he basically gave me the keys to the store after that and told me I could do whatever I needed to do. Uh, I love it. Hey, thank you for sharing that. You know, I talked about, you said something that kind of struck me. How many times did you, did you reach out to him 10 times? At least 10 times in person and maybe between the same amount in email as well. Perfect. Without, perfect. Without, without even a response from him. Yeah. See, perfect. You know, we talked about this on episode two, and I talked about that the average sales organization does two cold touches to prospects and give up. And what I identified with all the data says the average top professional sales organization when they close a cold prospect have done 12 touches and that's face to face that's phone calls that's emails so you're just reiterating what we are already saying it's just you know we have this impression to ourselves like we call we call we call we email even someone that seemed hot and ready to go because that happens to me all the time i get on a call with somebody and they're acting like they're gonna they're eager to throw me the the, the credit card and then uh 
then uh, they ghost me, right? And what we don't realize happens is they have their own lives. You know, they have other priorities. They have other things that are more important. It could it could be as simple as they had car trouble that could throw somebody uh, out of the funnel for weeks, right? It, it could be a an employee who quit, and now the owner's covering the, the finance role for a minute, and now, guess what? We're not having that opportunity. So anyway, uh, what a great story. Thank you for sharing, um, and um, I'd like to open the floor for uh, anybody else who wants to share. Anybody else? This is a $100 gift card to tell a story, and surely someone else has a story. Here, here we go, I'll Heather. Share. Let's do it. Be brave. Uh, Heather, um, who are you with? I work for Ziegler's as well. As oh, good. Chef, but I'm also new to the pet industry. I, I was in the food industry for a very long time. And um, I happen to be working with the owner of my company um, for a couple days and I know, I know how the restaurant industry works. So I know going in at lunchtime is not the greatest thing to do. Um, but the owner of my company wanted to go. So we were prospecting this customer and he absolutely humiliated, cursed us out threw my business card, threw our business cards in the garbage. And I was just like, okay. But so we walked out and I looked at the owner of my company and I said, Michael, I bet you $100 that he will be my customer. And I did. I followed up and he paid me $100 at the next sales meeting. But it was extremely huge. I mean, being yelled at and screamed at and cursed at in front of a bunch of customers was a first for me. Oh, you, I, I feel for you. I felt for you right then because I have been there. And isn't it a weird sensation, Heather, that you made that bet with your boss right outside there? Because it fueled you, did it not? Oh, it, I was on a mission at that point. Yes, so yes. Was, you are going to be my customer, and yeah, we'll we'll grow a friendship from. Yeah, that. the harder yeah. the rejection, the harder I'm going to try. There's no doubt about it. I have felt that way before. Um. And, and well, it's, it's also one thing when you, when you have your boss right around with you that, that you get it too. But, <laughs> you know, one of the slides that I had missing out of this thing that we're all having on a blog post uh, this afternoon is the fact that if you predetermine your response to rejection up front and decide you have two choices, right? You're either going to let it hurt you personally because we take it as a personal attack that's just we can't help it we're gonna take it personal but if you if you if you look at it a different way in the way you did which is perfect and you said like all right no there's no way in hell i'm letting this slide i he's gonna where we're gonna close i don't care what i gotta do we're gonna get this as a customer that's the attitude we want to do uh or the attitude could also mean in appreciation of, right? What I mean by that is if I do a cold visit and I get rejected, thank you. You know, I needed a no so I can get to the next yes. And so just be more appreciative of getting those um, those no's as a step forward and giving you that forward momentum is, is certainly awesome. All right. So thank you, Heather, for sharing. So we got two stories here so we're gonna have to kind of vote on this in a second but is there anybody else that has a story that they would like to share i have one robert uh here we go we got people talking now you know this is good i love it all right uh um uh, i don't see on my screen who's talking who's who's this is joanne joanne who are you with joanne canon marketing oh excellent so let's hear this what do you got Okay, so uh, diligently for about approximately 12 years, we tried to get into a huge chain account. Uh, you're probably all familiar with Pilot. So our competitor uh, kept us out. I went through dealers. I, I called direct. I tried uh, relentlessly for 10 years to get into this account. So um, just ironically, I had a customer servant, customer service 
in, on my staff come to me with a complaint uh, with a competitor's ice machine and they were wanting service. So uh, obviously my competitor was having mechanical issues. We sell ice machines. So I kind of swooped in like a hawk, give me the phone call, let me call them direct. So I called my servicer and went through the back door to get into this account. So I was able to go in and do a sales presentation about three years ago. And um, as of today, I have a new account or a new client is worth $3 million. Wow. 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 That is, uh, that is, uh, that is a really good story. So that phone call was worth how much? Uh, as of today, three million could be five million if I could get the equipment manufactured. <laughs> oh, I remember that story. Holy cow! And, that 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 and is that was about ten years worth of persistence, getting no after no after no after no. Oh, ten years! Oh, I didn't yes, catch that ten part. Years. Ten years! Holy cow! So never giving up matters. Never giving up Correct. matters. Wow. Wow, that is a, that's going to be a very very tough story to 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 overcome. <laughs> Who's got another story? There was someone else that was about to share. Even if your story's not as good, it doesn't matter. I would love to hear the story. I've got one. Um, sure. What's your name? Uh, Jill from Ziggler's. Oh, okay. Ziggler crew is all here. I love it. So. Um, you said about getting like chased out of a store. So mine's more of like a very weird personal blow. Um, so I had literally just gotten diagnosed with a brain aneurysm and I went into a store that sells really healthy pet food. And I went in to go talk to them about a really healthy pet food that we had. And I don't know if the owner was just having a really bad day or what, but I started to talk to him about the pet food and about how um, like the different aspects that it had that nothing else in his store had. And instead of um, thinking about it like, oh, wait, we have really healthy dog food. This is another really healthy dog food you're sharing. He literally turned on me and started screaming at me about how it had nothing to do with food and how it all has to do with genetics and how you can't change the health of a dog with food and then start screaming at me about how he is going to live longer than me because he has really good genetics and I'm probably going to die soon. It was, and this has never happened with this, um, with this owner of this shop before. Um, and literally just happened to happen to me about two months after my diagnosis. Wow. Um, I was so taken back. And literally, I'm just like, I'm telling you about a dog food and you're here screaming at me about how I'm going to die soon and how you're going to live to be 90. Wow. Wow. That, that, that hurts. Uh, so how'd you overcome that? Um, I had to leave the store. They now special order the food. And I actually just asked them about it again the other day, which reminded me about this story. <laughs> Wow. Um, but it was one of those where I just had to go leave the store and go calm down. Um, yeah, it was really, it was really strange. So you said about getting chased out of the store with the dog. And I was like, that's the first thing that came to my mind. Mm, wow. So we all have very strange, um, sales mishap stories. Wow. Well, Hey Jill, thank you for sharing that. And, uh, there's nothing worse than a personal attack. And uh, I've had, I've, and I've. By the way, he had no clue about the brain aneurysm. No clue. <laughs> just happened to go off on me that day. And I was like, whoa, what happened to you today? Yes. Sometimes they, sometimes the people, people will use you as a target for, for a little, little, little hate. And uh, that is no fun. But thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. Anybody else have a, have another share? Before we uh, do a little vote, let's just do a little vote. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm gonna have to say, um, I'm gonna have to say if we could maybe do a quick vote, and I'm gonna leave it with between Jill and um, Joanne's um, story. So between Joanne and Jill, let's do a little vote here about uh, which story was which which was best, and I'll let Miss Ashley. You still here? 
Robert, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, well, Walter Cannon was sharing an anecdote over a text. I wonder if you would like to read out. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I have not been paying any attention to the chat here. Customer told me that he would not buy anything made in Japan because his father was in World War II. I've heard this before. Was never able to sell him the product, but bought other products that I sold. That's awesome. Yeah, I yeah I I could see that happening. Uh, uh, of course, uh, if you were in World War II uh, with his dad, you know I could totally see that. Totally. Um, so um, so if we can get some uh, votes here, just put uh, Joanne or Jill. And just put in the in the um, in the chat, and we'll tally those up. Is Miss Ashley not here on the call? I don't see if she's here. I am. I am here. Oh, okay. I didn't. I didn't see, see it on I can here. Get this poll up. I've been running a poll for us. Oh, okay. Well, we got some people doing the chats here. All right. So let's move into this. Uh, the last thing I'm 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 a, I'm going. Uh, oh, that's great. She's put a little chat. She's a little poll here. Look, we're we're figuring out this technology. I'm I'm taking baby steps in this whole process. So. I appreciate you guys uh, letting me practice with you on some stuff. And now I'm going to give you, uh, real quick, I'm going to open the floor to any call-proof stuff that you want to talk about or maybe you got questions about before I go into the last thing on our breath work exercise um, that I'm going to kind of walk you through. It's a little bit wild and crazy, but I want to give you a tool that you can use when you find yourself in a negative place, negative energy, you don't have any energy to power through. It's just after lunch. You ate a big old crappy meal and you want to nap in the car and you don't want to go to that next visit, but you want to make some money. You want to go to that next sales opportunity. You want to go to that presentation and have fire in your belly and some energy. I have a digital drug I'm going to give you virtually on this call right now. And I'll also send you a link to a, the YouTube channel for this particular link. Anybody have anything on call proof that we want to talk about or ask questions about that you want to talk about before we move forward? We're at 50% on this poll right now. It's a tie with uh, Joanne and Jill. So 50-50 split here, the J&Js. Uh, see who's going to win at this uh, poll here. We got another uh, Joanne and still she's up. Now we're tied again. <laughs> uh, anyway, anybody have any questions that you want to cover? Yeah, Robert, this is Chuck. Um, when you go in and you make up your schedule or your routing for the, for the week, um, you put it in in a specific way and then you save it uh, and then you come back to look at it later on and it's all jumbled up again. Um, is there a way to keep it in order the way that you put it in? If you optimize it, it's my understanding, if you optimize it from your home, it's going to run you from your home to the first location uh, and then it's going to backtrack to make it closer to your home. But if you're going out and you're going to stay out, that's not going to work. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. You can always optimize it from where you're at. Okay. And so if you're using the app and you optimize it from where you're at, it's going to give you the best route based on your physical location. Okay. So go to your first location and then optimize while you're out in the field. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Great, great question, Chuck. I appreciate you asking. Uh, I hear somebody talking. Uh, you got a question? Uh, can, can, uh, can you mute that, uh, uh, Miss Ashley? Yeah, All it's right. muted. Go ahead. All right. Awesome. All right. So let's talk about breath work. What is breath work? We're doing it right now. <gasps> we're breathing. This is uh, wonderful. This is how we receive oxygen and our body is powered with the energy of the breath. And um, this little exercise I'm going to share with you is a recording that is available. It's about 10 minutes. Um, you'll see me uh, do this, uh, uh, this exercise and I'll kind of explain it. Um, it's if you are at a place where you can lay down, you can lay down flat, or you can sit in your 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 car, your 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 car seat, or you can sit up. It doesn't really matter. But by changing um, the quickness of your breath in the focus of your mental state, you can absolutely right now just think to yourself: How do you feel? Is there any anxiety in you? Is there anything that? Uh, it's keeping you from making that next step to doing that next activity. Um, 
or are you trying to recover uh, from a party and weekend and you're, you just need some power and you some energy? So this video that I'm going to share with you is called the uh, 20 Connected Breaths. And sorry about that. It's called 20 Connected Breaths. And it's basically an exercise of breath. And there's some holds, in, meaning holding your breath in, in it. But just watch the video and everything will be described and explained to you. I'm going to play this and this will be the end of our show. If you're, if you're not interested in doing any kind of breath work, exercises, you're happy to jump off here. But I'm going to play this and then we'll end the call right after. And I hope you guys have a great rest of the sales week. Here you go. Hi. This is the 20 connected breaths video. If you're finding yourself stressed, overwhelmed, or you're lacking confidence, that can dramatically impact your day. Here's some good news. With a few minutes of work, we can reverse that with some simple breathing exercises. The 20 connected breaths are four quick breaths, a slow inhale and exhale, and then repeat until we get 20 breaths. Then there's gonna be a 15 second hold on the inhale, and then you get right back into it. Now, these are six rounds. In the final round, there is a three minute hold. Now, it's not my expectation that you're gonna be able to hold for three minutes right away. This, like I said earlier, is work with doing your reps just like an exercise just like a workout you get stronger and just like anything new it's going to feel a little bit uncomfortable and for some of you it might be very uncomfortable you're going to notice your body will build up heat you will feel strange tingling sensations and overall you might think it's just too hard but Nothing is great in life without a little bit of work because doing hard things makes us stronger and more resilient. And you're going to see at the conclusion of this, because you chose hard, you're going to feel the sensation of bliss and a pile of energy to power you through the rest of your day. Now, we use sound to help indicate an inhale like this. And then exhale just like this. Now notice on the fifth breath, it's a little bit longer. Now, ready to get started. You can do this either sitting in your seat in your car with your seat leaned back a little bit, or you can sit on the floor with a straight back or laying on the floor in a comfortable position. Now take a moment and just breathe. All right, now we're ready to get started. seconds we're gonna hold all right let's get back in it seconds we're gonna hold all right let's get back in it
next 15 seconds, we're going to hold. All right, let's get back in it. For the next 15 seconds, we're going to hold. All right, let's get back in it. For the next 15 seconds, we're going to hold. All right, let's get back in it. three-minute hold, but if you're just starting out, just get to a minute. my friends i hope that somewhat energized you i hope that got you ready to power through your day i hope that got you in a mindset that it's time to get engaged with the activities that help you be disciplined at selling make those calls make those vids but do it with energy do it with some vigor and have a kick but day to day thanks for watching